I still don't have a lot of time, so let's go. Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Jess and I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about The Princess Diaries 2 Royal Engagement. The Princess Diaries 2 Royal Engagement is a 2004 theatrical release. It is directed by Gary Marshall, cinematography by Charles Minsky, editing by Bruce Green, music by John Debney, and it's written by Shonda Rhimes. The film stars Anne Hathaway as Mia, Julie Andrews as Queen Clarice, Hector Elizondo as Joe, Chris Pine as Nicholas, Heather Matarazzo as Lily, John Reese davies as Viscount Mabry and Callum Blue as Andrew. The film had a $45 million budget and made $134.7 million in the box office. It does have a 26% on Rotten Tomatoes. And there, was, there has been a third one planned for a while. Originally, Gary Marshall planned it, but as we know, Gary Marshall has since passed away. Um, but in 2019, it was announced that there was a script and that Julie and Anne were on board, but that Anne and Julie don't want to enter production until it's perfect. Um, I am dying. If there's a third one, I'll be so excited. I want everyone to come back, so. There were some really great choices in this movie and I really just like, I don't know if I talked about Gary in the first one, but I need to talk about Gary in this one because his ability to like tell kind of a very beautiful story while also being genuinely funny like there were moments in this that I was absolutely laughing out loud and I've seen this movie before many times I own it like but there were multiple moments that like I genuinely laughed and his just a vision to bring this all together and make it like a very family friendly movie but not a movie that adults will be like oh it's too much for kids like it's not enjoyable like Mia is just genuinely so sweet that you can't be mad that she's like friends with all these kids and stuff like that. But his some of his decisions are just like the weight to reveal Mia's face, Anne Hathaway's face, was so good. Like right at the beginning, you only see the back of her head when she's saying bye to some of her friends at college. And then you only see the side of like her face with her hair in front of it when she looks out at Genovia on the plane. And then only you get Julie Andrews revealed first, which is incredible. And then only when she's revealed at her 21st birthday in that beautiful red gown, do we get to see Anne Hathaway for the actual first time. And that is, is just such a good choice. And I feel like Gary really just was out here making choices like that all the time. The music in the first one was great. The music in this one, also great. You get Kelly Clarkson, you get Raven Simone. I'm pretty sure you get Lindsay Lohan in the credits there. And then you also get Justin McCartney in the credits. So like the music for this, so good. And then I got so emotional when Julie Andrews sang. I have seen this movie multiple times, but I think just the weight of the fact, I'm pretty sure this was the first movie she like sang in since she had had problems with nodes and her vocal surgery and everything. So I remember this being like a big deal and everyone on set was like emotional. And when they were like begging her to sing, I was like, oh yeah, I can't wait, this is very sweet. And like when she started and it was on Heather Matarazzo, Lily's character, Lily, um, there was something about her in that shot that I was like, oh, like, I don't think she's acting. Like, I think the weight of the fact that Julie freaking Andrews is about to sing to all this room of women is like hitting her. So then it hit me and I got so emotional when she sang to them. It was so sweet. And then like Anne harmonized her with a little bit and then Raven came up and sang with her. And I remember when this mo movie was being promoted, I think on the Disney Channel, Raven was like in a side interview saying like, I get to sing with Julie Andrews like I pinch me. I don't, you know, and uh, it was just such a special moment for sure. Okay, I might have to glance down at my notes for this section because there were multiple lines in this movie that were just like so good. And some of them are like iconic. And then there's a couple that I think people just like don't realize. So first, I want to talk about a little bit of the story. The opening when Mia's giving a voiceover, it's very expository because they're telling us what's Lily up to, what's happened in five years, because it's been five years since the first one in this universe. Um, and they're telling us what happened to uh, Lily and Michael and why Michael's not in the movie, basically. They use the excuse that he's traveling with his band. So it's a pretty expository opening, but it's not the worst. Um, and then the movie isn't like 
as expository later, which is great. There is a moment where the Viscount, like, you can tell without him saying anything that he's bad news just by the way he speaks to Mia. So when he's like, oh, careful, your highness, someone might try to take that from you. And she was like, oh, I hope not. Thank you so much. And walks away. You could have just held on him. And he said, someone might try to take that away from you. Everyone knows it's him. He didn't have to be like, someone like me out loud. Like, we didn't need that. That was also very expository and kind of not my flavor. Um, other things story-wise, I love the chemistry. This is a little bit later, but I, I love... Mia and Nicholas, what I wish we had more of earlier, because we do get the beautiful moment at night with them where they're doing a thumb war and they're like telling each other secrets, that's gold to build their relationship. And I wish we had more of that earlier. We obviously get that whole like enemies to lovers stuff in the beginning, but I wish there had been more moments of the two of them that helped push the like they have are great together, even though they don't like each other, like whatever else, because really only the only times we got to see them were them kind of bickering and then they kiss and it's like, yeah, okay, they have obviously very high chemistry, but there was nothing really that made them, you know, I like who you are as a person. Granted, he was seeing her like try to be queen. So he's seeing her nice moments of like getting the kids to join the parade and stuff like that. Um, I wish there was more of like the secret telling scene because that was like, but it was already like they were already fall, fell for each other basically. Then the other story thing I want to talk about is Andrew. We do not deserve Andrew. No one in the world deserves Andrew. What a, I mean, Saint me is also incredible obviously, but the fact that Andrew not only agrees to an arranged marriage period and proposes to her in a week because she only has 30 days, which is disgusting. But then after he's seen that, like, she obviously doesn't love him, but like, you know, he doesn't love her in that way. Um, and she's been like caught on camera with another man. He still is like, well, we agree there's no spark, but here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get married tomorrow and you're gonna be the queen of Genovia because you're gonna be a great queen. Like, what an amazing human being to sac like make a sacrifice like that, just like she's willing to make that sacrifice for her country, but Genovia isn't even his country. Like, the fact that he's willing to do that is just like, oh my gosh, Andrew, we don't deserve you. No one deserves you. So I needed to say that. Now, Lines in this movie that are just so good. You can step on my foot anytime. I don't know why it took me out, but it made me laugh a lot. Then, the one that made me laugh the most is when, <laughs> when Mia meets N Nicholas for the first time, like knowing it's the guy who's trying to steal her throne, not like when she dances with him and steps on his foot. The time she actually meets him and realizes that like she kind of flirted with him or whatever and she like deliberately stomps on his foot <laughs> and like everyone in the room can see she 100% did it on purpose. Joe looks at the Viscount and just goes, an accident. <laughs> just like it made me laugh so hard because I was like, Joe, I love you so much. <laughs> You're the best character. And then later when Mia and uh, Nicholas are like having a little bicker moment where she's like, you lied to me when you danced with me and all this kind of stuff. And he's like, I didn't lie to you. I don't like give my family tree when I dance with a woman, whatever else. Then she says, you know, she calls it a lie dance. She was like, you did it with your little lie dance. And then she keeps like going. And I've never noticed what he says while she keeps going about like, you know, your lie dance, your liar, whatever. And they're trying to head to privacy or whatever. And Chris goes, what is a lie dance? And I don't know why, but the way he said it, I was like, I feel like it had to have been improv. I feel like Anne said, called it a lie dance, like in a moment. And I feel like Chris was like talking and talking and then was like, what is a lie dance? Like so genuinely because the, oh my God, the delivery of it was so priceless. I, it took me out. Um, not as much as an accident did, but man, that took me out. And then another iconic moment is the word fear is not in my vocabulary. And then Joe says, yes, but it's in your eyes. Oh, dude. <laughs> oh, Hector Elizondo just knows how to deliver lines like that. So good. Um, 
And then last but not least, we never rush. We hasten, <laughs> which is just so good. So good. So there's so many moments in this movie that are just genuinely funny. Like regardless of your age, that's fun. Those are funny. They're funny. Um, or it's just me, which is fine. A lot of people might not know that this was Chris Pine's like first, like this was his big break. This was his first big movie. I'm sure he's done like student films before this and acted in plays and all that kind of stuff. But this was like his first big movie. And there's an interview somewhere. If I can find it, I'll put it in. But there's an interview somewhere where like someone asked him his, the first movie like he ever did. And he like leans in and he goes, that would be Princess Diaries 2, Royal Engagement. And then like, he gets asked another question and it's the same answer. So he goes, that would be Princess Diaries 2, Royal Engagement. Which, like, and it, I remember, I mean, it's stuck in my mind. I haven't seen this interview in years. I'm telling, I'm talking years. Like probably since a Star Trek movie he was in came out. Like, probably, and not the third one. Cause I don't think I've seen the third one. So, oh, maybe I have seen the third one. I don't know. Uh, but not since like one of those, when he was like interviewing with like Zachary Quinto all the time and stuff like that. And they would do their vocab battles because it makes me laugh and I think you guys should see it. And I, if they do a third one, I want him to come back so bad because I would love to see Anne and Chris act with each other again after the experiences they've had since this movie. They're both such incredible actors. I would love to see that. Anyway, Julie Andrews, we know she's graceful. We know she's so elegant and she's amazing and she's awesome. She's also hilarious, okay? I don't think people realize how funny Julie Andrews is because when Lionel like leans into her and he's like, your majesty, and she looks up and he's right there and she, her reaction was so funny. And I'm like, Julie Andrews, people don't give you enough credit. She's hysterical about being funny. They give her not enough credit ever because it's Julie Andrews, but you know what I mean. And then Andrew, I, you guys know at this point, I cannot say it. Um. Callum is in Smallville. He plays General Zod in season nine. <laughs> Smallville connection. <laughs> um, and then Spencer and Abigail Breslin are in this movie, which I think is very sweet. I feel like this movie happened so soon after the first one because I feel like I just reviewed the first one, but uh, it turns out it is three years later. For some reason I had in my brain that the movie was out in 2003, but it was 2001. So it is three years later, I guess. But in the story, it's five years later. Um, when Anne and Chris are like sleeping or whatever, she's like holding his hand here and then holding his hand here was the sweetest thing in the world. I couldn't deal with that. Um, when Mia finds the secret room and she's like, nice, <laughs> like that's so real. There's so many moments in this movie that are like genuinely real. Like when the maid of the Viscount starts shoving popcorn in the couch, dude, that is the realest moment. You cannot convince me. That, like, sh that had to, like, they were just filming her and they're like, okay, do all these things and, like, react or whatever. And she just started shoving popcorn in the couch. That, there's nothing realer than that. Like, that made me laugh. So much made me laugh. Joe and Clarice, the truest love story. Like, we, it's what I'm here for. I, I cried when they got married. Which I've never, I don't think I've ever cried in this movie, just so we know. But there's something about watching it for this project, blah, 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 blah. Um, I cried when they got married because, amazing. Andrew's react, I've never noticed this, but Callum's, Andrew's reactions every time Nicholas is around because he feels the same like Mia, he's very loyal to Mia. So anytime he like appears, Andrew's reactions are so priceless. Like he's just like, oh, he's like, oh, okay, you're here, great. Just so good. There's a Stan Lee cameo in this movie. I never realized that that was Stan Lee until I've seen all the Marvel movies now. I have no idea why Stan Lee would be in this movie cameo cameoing. It's not a Marvel movie. And Hathaway is a superhero. Mia Thermopolis Rinaldi, Queen of Genovia, is a superhero. <laughs> Marvel Cinematic Universe called Mia's in. I cried when they got married and then I cried again when Mia got sworn in. All so beautiful uh, and really, <sighs> got me good. Uh, that's everything I have for this. If a third one happens, I need Andrew and Mia to be besties. Like I need that. I need them to be like best friends. Like they both have families or, you know, maybe Mia, I don't know, whatever. Andrew has a family or something. And like he summers in Genovia or something like that. And he comes and visits. Like I need them to be best friends. I need this in my life. 
And then that's everything I have. I love this. I love this movie. I feel like it was better than I remembered. I mean, the first one, I think I will always love more just because it's the first one, but this one is good. <laughs> it's fun and good and funny. I think it might be funnier than the first one. This one took me out. The first one I think has like such a great arc for Mia. Not that it's not a great arc for me in this one, but like she doesn't have to do that. Like she's becoming more and more like, you know, an adult and stuff. But no, I think this one was way funnier. <laughs> like it was so, not that the first one isn't funny. Again, yeah, the first one was funny, but this one had so many lines it took me out. So yeah. All right, my final rating is eight crowns out of 10 our total movie count is our cry count is <laughs> parent death toll is still the same if you want to keep up with what movie i'm watching when follow me on instagram twitter you'll find out what movie i'm watching when i put out videos every monday and friday and sometimes wednesday join patreon i have a tier starting at just one dollar uh you get every video a week early and you get a coupon code for merch with that tier so go ahead and check it out buy merch merch is great you can't buy this anymore because it was limited edition but there's plenty of other options go check it out until next time, comment, like, and subscribe, but I'm not in charge of real life. You are. So you do you, and don't be Viscount My Mabry about it. Duh. Ugh. Alright, I need to go eat lunch so I can leave for work.